Meadow YouTube, you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. Yes, I'm going to be waiting in on the current drama in the fitness industry. If you've been on the channel for a while, you know that this is not my style. It's not something I like to do. But in this case, I have no choice because we are dealing with topics that are dear to my heart. And I just cannot say, stay still and just say nothing. It's not possible. So in my usual flair, I have prepared a long list of things I want to share with you today because... I'm going to be tackling the biggest fish of the fitness industry, aka Coach Greg. I'm not going to say his full name. I'm still trying to assess whether or not it's smart. I have seen other people refuse to do it because they're afraid of certain lawsuits or legal pursuits. So I'm going to play it safe as I've always done when I actually study characters. Because yes, this is going to be a character study of sort, but not the type you're used to. Because I've always refused to make videos about Greg. And it's not because I don't have anything to say, really. For me, it was just a matter of preference. I don't find the guy interesting enough in terms of lol cows, meaning that to me, he's not the type of person that I can make funny episodes on or someone who is dangerous enough. That was until yesterday slash two days ago. Because in reality, to me, he was always harmless. Some might say annoying. Some might say... He, his programs were overpriced. That's fine and all. Those are critiques. But it never got to the point where I considered him dangerous. And for me, I make character studies on people that are dangerous, that are actively harming others. That's it. But we've come to a point where I think that Greg has overstepped his boundaries and he has now committed the one sin that I personally cannot forgive. And that is copyright striking another channel uh, with false pretenses. That to me is a line you cannot cross. And when that happens, I step in. I have no choice. So, in this long, I think, episode, I'm going to be detailing everything that's going on. All of the lies that Greg spewed. And all of the, uh, the projections, all of the manipulation that is going on on his part. To try and avoid actually answering the tough questions. So, first off, as I said, I, I don't like drama. On this channel and something on YouTube fitness that I've always resented personally is that to grow a channel you are supposed to make videos about other people aka drama and I've always refused okay you look at my videos I think there's a thousand on the channel I've never done that because to me it's not a pure way to develop a community you end up with a community of people who are deeply hating on others who are not there for the right reasons and I don't want that the only moments where I indulge in the drama is when I go for the kill. It's always the same with me. I'm not going to engage in back and forth just for the sake of it for views. I'm not interested. For me, if I have a target and I've decided, okay, that person is bad, I go full out. That's the moment where I have, I, I don't hold anything back and I just go out. That's rarely the case, but when it happens, it happens. In this case, I want you to know it's not what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to try and remain relatively centered. That being said, I am not going to be polite or courteous because there are certain things that need to be addressed. If you look at the channel again, I made one video about Greg, I think six months ago, and the video was positive. It was a video made about man gaining, where I explained that Greg was right. Man gaining does work. And I wanted to put that out there because I hear too many people say that to gain muscle as a novice, you need to bulk beyond these abs absurd bulks. And I've always been against that. So we actually had a point of collaboration in this little part of YouTube fitness where I agreed with him. And I actually agree with him on a lot of things. So this is also to say that I don't detest him entirely. I see the way YouTube fitness shifts again and again. And something that I find personally that is deeply linked to fanboyism is... People either like you all the way or they hate you all the way. And I see too many people who two months ago were lap dogs of Greg turning their coat and now behaving like he's Satan, even though he really isn't, right? He's done bad things and I'm going to talk about them, but the guy doesn't just suddenly become an entire black hole of negativity and stupidity just because he did one thing wrong. He still gives good advice. He still has some positive traits to him. His channel still has the potential to get there, to help people. And that's what I want to, as ambitious as this might sound for a small channel, help him do and help his fans do. You will see that in this video, I'm going to be using a weird 
switch of semantic terms, I'm going to sometimes use the you as, as if I were talking to Greg directly, because I know that there's a chance he's going to watch this video, and the Greg, so the third person. Because to me, it's just the way that it naturally comes out. You will find that it also matches my mood in certain parts of the video. So, as I said, all of this, this entire video was triggered by Jeff. Geoffrey Verti Scofield, which is a long name, so I'm just going to say Geoff. That's the way we pronounce it in my language. What happened with Geoff is simple. He makes videos criticizing others. You can call it drama if you will. I personally find that his videos are well made and they actually discuss information and not just content of character. He's made several videos about Greg, some of which he got an answer for or a response video, some of which he didn't. But the last he made got striked. It just got censored and erased from the platform like this. And this is where it's not a game anymore. This is, not, this is where we stop playing, okay? It was fun, and the back and forth and drama, if you enjoyed that, is harmless to an extent, but this crosses the line. And this is when I have to step in, I have no choice. I want you to know that it has nothing to do with the person who got striked, in reality. Or, Greg, in reality, it's just... If I compare the forces at play here, there's an obvious cam that I have to join. And it's not motivated by the fact that I think that Geoff does make good content. He gave me shoutouts in the past, so I could also be emotionally invested. But if you know me, I don't work like that. I'm not on this platform to make friends. I have zero intention of making collabs in the future. I'm just sticking to my guns and my principles. And my principles state that free speech is absolute. And I know I'm losing some of you guys here, you know, thinking, oh, what is he saying? What, what is absolute? Absolute. You cannot limit it. If you limit free speech, it's not free speech anymore. I understand. I understand it's an extreme mindset to have. I own it. I apply it to my life. You might not do it to yours. That's fine. But what I want you to know in this case is that this is not what happened. Meaning that we are not dealing with a case of free speech being breached within the reach of the law. This was unlawful. And this is something that was said before, you cannot content ID strike, you cannot copyright strike a video just because your content is in there. YouTube allows you to, it doesn't make it right, because there are still laws to be respected that YouTube doesn't really concern itself with, because it is the responsibility of supranational entities, and it's something I'm going to be discussing today. But all of that to say that, I stand with free speech, and therefore I stand with the wielder of free speech, and not the person who is trying to squash it. In the, on the topic of free speech, there's a lot of moral relativism surrounding the topic and the question. Too many people I know already, I can already read the comments, are going to say, oh, but we're talking about a private company. YouTube does whatever they want. And what, if they give the right to Greg to censor a video, then it is still lawful. It might technically be correct. I'm not going to argue with that. I think that it, it is not, and that if we actually went through the process of going through the courts and seeing the, the legal procedures be pushed through, you would see that Geoff would win. But in this case, my problem is not this. My problem is that this is a very dangerous mindset to have because you are allowing powers, superior powers, to censor smaller channels. And you might think that you're just doing it in the spirit of I don't know, the free market or whatever you want to call it, but you are digging your own grave. You realize that, right? I know it's cliche to say, but they're coming for him now. They'll be coming for you next. You should be fighting for the concept of free speech, regardless of who says things that you disagree with or who uses free speech. You cannot constantly retreat back and say, oh, well, they've encroached on free speech just a tiny bit more, but we'll be fine. It's going to be okay. No, you won't be okay. Fight for it now. Stand for it now. This is what I'm doing with this video. And this is what YouTube Fitness as a whole is doing because there is a large amount of voices being heard right now saying that's not right. And I'm going to put it into words. I'm going to explain to you why it's not right. And the entire situation with Greg as a whole because this was a slow buildup. And all of that is really created by the fact that he has managed to acquire a monopoly on YouTube fitness of sorts, meaning that he has challenges, but he really does have a lot of power in this. And the issue is that YouTube prioritizes powerful channels, channels with a lot of subs, a lot of, of gains with the algorithm, etc. The issue here is that they have so much power, Greg has so much power, 
that he has the ability to completely squash anyone. Like, if we're talking technically, he can. I'm not talking about, you know, the pros or his ability to master the logos and argue with people. I'll get to that later. But just on a, on a click-to-click basis, if he decides that he doesn't like your channel, he has the power to close it. And that's just not okay. It's a situation we're dealing with, but it's, it's never okay. And that's through two things in reality. It's through the legal system, because as Jeff put it so, uh, so uh, eloquently, yes, he might be able to content, contest a strike on his channel, but then it goes to the court. And if, if you still believe that the legal system is fair, wake up and smell the coffee. It isn't. If you don't have the money to afford a good lawyer, if you don't have the money to go through the month and month and years of procedures, of fees, of the insane amount of money it costs to go through legal procedures, of being entangled in a lawsuit, you will lose. Someone rich who did harm to you can still win the lawsuit just because he's going to strangle you out of any hair. And in this situation, that's the case. From what I know and what I've heard, Geoff doesn't want or have the capacity to go through that nonsense. And therefore, he loses by default. This is why content ID strike and copyright strikes are wrong. It's because the person who wields it, if powerful enough, can just abuse it. And it's been done in the past. And for the people who want to know also why, some of my character studies focus on certain people. It's because to me, the second you start doing that, you are garbage. I don't care who you are, what you did, the information, the quality. When you start applying censorship, it's over. It's done. You, you, you just went too far and you need to be put back in your place. And in this case, I'll be the one to do it if needed. I'm not, I'm not going to be the only one. I know some people are going to say that it's presumptuous, but it's, those are my principles. It needs to be done. And Greg should know all of what I already said. And I think he does know it. This is the reason why it's so bad. The situation is so terrible. He did that on purpose. This is not a whoopsie mistake. Whoops. I strike your channel. Whoops. I mean, at this point, I was sort of expecting him to try and misdirect the attention of people by saying, oh, it's my team. They don't know what they're doing. I'll make it right. But he didn't, he didn't even do that. This shows the level of ego that he's developed at this point where he doesn't even feel the need to damage control. It's insane. He truly does think he's untouchable. And maybe he's right. I'll get to that. Maybe he's right. But in my head, he isn't. He did it on purpose. This was on purpose. This was a calculated move to silence a critique based on the fact that the critique was going to reduce the sale of a product, a product that is, by the way, way overpriced. And this is something that cannot be you cannot argue against that. And Greg didn't even try to argue against that, but I'm going to continue explaining why it's so overpriced. And now I'm going to get into something that needs to be said right off the bat because I know it's going to be a counter-argument that is going to be used. People are going to ask me, look, NH, you say all of that and you seem pretty pissed and you have all of these big ideas about free speech, but you comment on Greg's page. So what's up with that? Well, I'm going to tell you what's up with that. First off, I do whatever I want. I can comment on anyone's page. If I want to comment on someone's page 15 times a day, I will. If YouTube wants to ban me for being a bot, which they have done in the past, they can. If the person who owns the page can ban me, they can. But Greg never banned me. Yeah, so that's, that's step number one. Step number, step number two. This, this argument is pretty much based on the idea that if I comment, I am therefore a nut hugger and a fanboy by default. And so by me now speaking badly about Greg, I am a hypocrite. I want you to know one thing. By doing this, you are reinforcing what I explained in my parasocial video. You are creating a group that rejects free thinkers because that's what I am. I'm a free thinker. I'm not part of your little cult of personality. I never worshiped Greg. I was just posting comments, making fun of him for the most part, making fun of his subscribers or some of the people he made videos about. And that's my right. And the problem is too is that by you pointing me out for doing that and saying, oh, it makes you just like us. Well, then you also understand that by that, you attribute a negative connotation to me doing that, but you're saying that it makes me part of your group. So what does it say about your group? It means that deep down, you know that what you're doing is not right, that you've lost your individuality. And this is a knee-jerk reaction to seeing someone who has individuality. Because I have been attacked a lot in Greg's comments by his fanboys because they don't like my jokes. It's gotten to a point where 
A lot of people think, oh, you post positive comments on his page. But that's because it's the only comments you see. In reality, ton of my comments get downvoted to oblivion by his fine boys because I critique him. And across the board, I've even gotten to the point where for me to be able to convey a, an idea in his comments, I had to camouflage it. This is how bad his community has gotten, by the way, because of him. To be able to make a simple joke, I needed to make it appear as a positive for him, so that the group and the court could think, oh, he's worshipping like us, let us give him support. But in reality, it's never what I've done. And it really speaks poorly on the intellect of these people, because they couldn't even see through. They couldn't even detect the sarcasm that is fairly obvious in my comments. And that is the Church of Greg. It's all of these people who joined the channel very recently, who made it into what it is. And these people are fanboys coming straight from the, from the mainstream, who are also responsible for what he's become. Because he, do he didn't just transform into that new Greg. You know that new Greg I'm talking about? The guy who speaks way higher than he usually has spoken in the past. The guy who has developed an ego out of nowhere. Man, I've been following the guy ever since his channel started. Ever since the infancy of his page, and I've seen the evolution, and I will get back to that later, but I have seen a stark difference, and a lot of people have also noticed that, to the point where I barely comment on his page anymore, because I have lost the connection to a person that I thought I liked, and I realized that I didn't, and I don't know if he just hid his personality all the time and now it's revealed, or, that, or if that is just a, a, a transformation that was brought by power and wealth and influence, I don't know that, I'm not in his brain. But I can tell you that it is a big reason why I hear so many people say that they don't like his videos anymore, is because it seems like he changed. And I, and I do think he did change. So all of that to say that fanboyism is bad regardless of the source. Even if I was a fanboy of Greg, if me making this video could teach you anything, it's that, one, you can get out of it, you can get out of the court, and two, that the concept of fanboyism is bad regardless of who does it. I mean, it doesn't apply to individuals. It's not, if I do it, it's right, but if you do it, it's wrong. No, it's wrong across the board. You need to keep that in mind, always. And all of that has also a direct uh, correlation with what Greg made his audience into. Because in reality, you get... A, a, an audience of fanboys and nuthuggers. You build it. There are channels who managed to get big who never got to that level. And the reason why is they managed to keep it safe. They managed to keep the spirit of the channel complete. And that has never been done by Greg. If anything, he's done the exact opposite, meaning that he's engaged in behaviors that have led to his audience becoming obsessed with him as a person. And that can be seen especially when he's interacting with others. And this is where we get into, again, the contacts he had with Geoff before this entire thing went down. But before I talk about Geoff, I want to mention another channel. Another guy who got wronged by Greg, who no one really mentions anymore, and that's Team 3D Alpha. For the people who don't know who Team 3D Alpha is, it's really simple. He's a guy who really likes bodybuilding. He makes informative videos about science, genetics, certain supplements, good stuff. We're talking about actually high quality content on YouTube fitness. And this guy at some point, I think if I remember correctly, made a video about nucleus overload, which is a valid concept of hypertrophy. <clears throat> and I think he related that to Greg because he said, oh, Greg has big legs because of nucleus overload, blah, blah, blah. And Greg made an answer. And in his answer, he just tried to debunk the concept. I don't know why exactly, but he tried. And what we've seen at this very point is the catalyst, I believe, in the creation of God Greg. Because in a normal debate, there would be a back and forth, maybe an exchange, maybe a live stream or Skype of some sort, and then a resolution. But that never happened. What happened is Greg made an answer, a response, where he pretty much just ignored all of Team 3D Alpha's points. He, he took them, he twisted them so that he could actually give an answer, but he actually never gave answers to the concepts presented. And then when Team 3D Alpha was like, whoa, 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 like, no, you misrepresented my points. This is not how it works. Here, this is the truth. Greg ignored him, meaning that he couldn't muster the information or knowledge to be able to have a normal debate with someone about fitness, something he's supposed to be very knowledgeable about, and therefore he just pretended it never happened. And if that was just that, it would be okay. But something much worse happened. 
Because in reality, Greg won that debate. <clears throat> and he won that debate through something that I've discussed in the past show video, which is strength in numbers, the mass attacking. This is exactly what happened. Ask Team 3 Alpha, if you will, look at the amount of dislikes he got on these videos. Look at the amount of comments, some of which containing slurs, all of which coming from Greg subscribers. Did you find in these comments any relevant information? Was there any of these people who give answers, who try to engage with Team 3 Alpha? Nope. They all came in, called him an idiot, said, oh, Coach Greg said you're bad, so you're bad, and that's it. First off, think about the guy, think about the channel, mentally speaking, I mean, it must be tough. And I'm not sitting there fighting an elements battle. It also goes for Geoff. He's a grown man. Okay? He, he can handle himself. I'm sure he's doing fine. But on a scale, right, in a, as a whole, you can see that it's a terrible practice. And the thing is, <clears throat> you might tell me, well, okay, but Greg doesn't control his subscribers. He, he didn't send them. Well, I disagree with that 100%. He did send them through his behavior, a behavior that I will be telling. I will explain it to you exactly how he gets his audience to react like this. But the first one that I already uh, explained here is intellectual dishonesty. Greg gets dishonest in debates. There is no other way around it. When he's presented with a concept he doesn't like or doesn't fully understand, he just takes it, takes 80% out, looks at the 20% and says, oh, this is stupid. Well, yeah, you took 80% out. This is called a straw man argument. You're not arguing the point. You're arguing a point that you made in your own head. You're, you're like the guy who's taking a shower and having flashbacks of confrontation he had in his life when suddenly he finds the one liner that makes it all work. Well, the issue is that life and YouTube fitness is not your shower, Greg. You're supposed to engage with people on a level playing field. And you've never done that. And you're allowed to not do that because you have a big channel. You have a big channel. So if you lose a debate or if you feel like you're losing ground, you can just send the idiots that watch your video and think that you're the, the, new, the new best things in Jesus Christ and they're going to do the dirty work for you. That's not acceptable. And it's a, it's a pattern of behavior that has been repeated and that we've seen with Geoff because the way Greg treated Geoff was first one, uh, Jeff made a video about, I, I do believe, his training book or his cookbook or something, and it wasn't, it wasn't super clean. So Greg could come in, he could pick apart certain things, he could again twist other things to make a response video, and he did. So that's something that Jeff, by the way, took with a smile. Okay, he took the L. He was like, okay, video wasn't clean, you played it rough, <clears throat> never mind, moving on. Then he made another video discussing, I think, this time the, the, the training plan. And he explained also that his ebook was better, which in my opinion is objectively correct. And in this case, Greg just ignored him. See, that's step one and step two. Step one of Greg is, oh, you come after me? Okay, I'm going to just completely twist your words. And then if you continue coming after me and you present something like Team 3 Alpha did or Geoff did that is too solid... I'm just going to pretend it doesn't exist because I can. Because the power of big channels is exactly that. They can get away with whatever because the audience is too stupid to realize what's going on. And then number three, censorship. Because after Greg ignored Jeff, Jeff a few days ago, I think two days ago, put out a video that was again criticizing uh, Greg's training plans, diet plans, the, the insane prices, etc. And it got censored. Wrongfully so. And factually speaking, it shouldn't have been because it was fair use. And when you start coming after fair use, especially as someone who sells products, you are a scammer. You know why? A scammer is someone who doesn't want his products critiqued. Because if you start critiquing them, then people see the flaws and they don't buy. That's why people call you a scam artist. It's not because it's expensive. You try that misdirection saying, oh, it's expensive, so what? It's not the price that really matters. It's the correlation with the quality and the price that people question. But again, I'm going to get into that because as you can see, another long video. I mean, if you're on this channel at this point, you understand how it goes. So, <clears throat> I explained the two, uh, the two dramas. And the two dramas uh, re really resonate with me because Greg did it to me too. I was a quote-unquote victim of his behavior. Meaning that for me, the way it happened is, as I said, I post comments on his videos and I post comments that sometimes are positive, sometimes negative. And when he does bad things, I'm on other channels. That's how I grow my channel. I also post comments about him on other channels. Think that, by the way, I post under his videos too. 
But what Mr. Greggy did is he screenshotted, screenshotted my comments, plugged them into one of his videos, and just made me appear like the biggest hypocrite on earth, where he presented me as someone who just spoke behind his back. And the worst thing too is that the first comment he did uh, that with, that little practice, that little trick, I actually confronted him, meaning that underneath that very comment on the video, I was like, hey, this is why I said that, and we had a back and forth, and I still stuck to my guns, but he never showed that, did he? The only thing he showed was the initial message, and you know what that did? It made it so that I couldn't re-comment under his videos at all, because every time I would, I would have an army of 13-year-olds who would tell me that, oh, you said this, and Greg said this, and every time I would try and say, no, no, this context, I was ignored. You know why? They don't care about context. And Greg knows it. So it's his job to provide context. But he doesn't. Why? It serves his purpose. If he doesn't provide context, he can paint his opponents as disloyal, dishonest, malevolent, etc. And by default, that means that he wins. Because his audience thinks of him as a god, as someone who has no fault. And therefore, he's always going to come out the winner. That is just not right. And that's... His entire channel is this, because in reality, if you look at it, it's based on logos. It's based on the idea that he's going to discuss things with others. But the only moments I see Greg actually having a discussion with people is when he's arguing against people more stupid than he is, or stupider than last time, whatever you want to call it. And that across the board is your Gymshark models, all of the roid heads that can barely string two words together. Oh, when he's arguing against these people, no problem. He's not intellectually dishonest at all. He's actually talking about points. He's making direct quotations and paraphrases. Why? Because he's arguing against low bro individuals, people who struggle to, to tie their shoes, okay? These, these are easy targets. It's too easy to argue against these people, but he does it because he knows he can actually come out vic victorious in a spectacular fashion in these cases, and he has. I'm also giving that to Greg. You have. You've, you've matched against some of the biggest idiots on YouTube Fitness who share really terrible misinformation, and you crush them. And as someone who's part of the community, I appreciate you for that. You used your power for good. But then you turn around and you use it for bad. And it makes me question myself and think, okay... Did he just do that because he knew he would get it would get him more of a, of an aura of authority? Because then, when you're actually engaging in an intellectual and intelligent debate, you don't use the same skills anymore. You, you become dishonest, and that's just not right. And the worst part about all of that is you built your channel through that. The, be honest. I mean, I've been following you from the start. Okay, I've seen the trajectory of your channel. You blew up when you started doing drama, and that's. It can't really be blamed on you. It can be blamed on YouTube. It's the, it's the culture on YouTube. That's how it is. But the problem is that you're being a complete hypocrite about it because every single time someone makes a video about you for critiques, most likely, you call them cloud chasers. You say that they're just doing that to spew for views. But that's what you do. You can't turn around and call the people out on something that you do constantly. And the worst part is that... that, that back and forth behavior, that double standard that you impose is directly correlated to the size of the channel you talk about. Meaning that you have integrated for some weird reason that the bigger the channel, the more value, and therefore you feel perfectly comfortable crushing smaller channels, treating them like shit, disrespecting them, not engaging properly. But when you're talking about big guys, or oh, in this case, you're nice. Like when you spoke about PewDiePie, oh, PewDiePie says a ton of nonsense about lifting and fitness because he's, he's a normie, he's a noob, he knows nothing. But you took it super easy on him. You made some jokes here and there, blah, 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 but it never got real. And it never got real because you were sucking up to someone higher. But the problem is that if you want to see if someone is a good person, you look at the way they treat people who are inferior to them. And the way you tra treat small channels is disgusting. And the, the reason why it's so disgusting is because you target them. There's no other way about it. When someone smaller than you makes a video about you, you don't engage them to actually get to a point of conclusion that would bring value and knowledge to your audience, like you say. No, you answer for the purpose of crushing them and crushing them only. And when you can't, when you're dealing with someone who has a little bit of balls, like Team 3 Alpha or Geoff, you ignore or you use what I would only can only describe as dark legal procedures to keep them shut. And that's not acceptable. Small channels will not take it lying down. We're staying up. 
Enough of that nonsense. Well, so what? You have more subscribers than us. It makes you a better human. It makes you a better person. It's, it does look like we think it does. And the problem is that we are the community. We are the small moms and pops shops. It's us. We have a small audience, sure. We have a small community, but we're all tight-knit. We should all be in this together. And the fact that the, one of the biggest names in the industry treats people in the community so poorly reflects terribly on the entire community. Because it really looks like we're de de dealing with a company. It feels like you're my boss. Why? I never signed up for that job. And yet you seem to have the power to fire me at any time. Something like Geoff recently realized. And that is all due to a power imbalance. A power imbalance that should always be taken into account and that Greg should keep in his head. I know a lot of big channels with a million subs who have that. They have that awareness. They realize that, hey, if I talk about a small channel, I might actually trigger a raid. But not only do you not care about that, it seems like you actually do it on purpose. I, I've, called, I've called you out for that on the, in the past. I told you that you're basically answering all the 66 meaning that you're sending your audience to target others. And you know what? Jason Genova, the well-respected bodybuilder and uh, Ruby Classic winner, did that. But the difference between you and Genova is that Genova is clinically retarded. He has that excuse. You don't. And on top of that, the overwhelming strength of your Order 66s cannot be matched by the Piss Lord. Yours are like... Insane. I've seen it happen firsthand on Team 3D Alpha where it was thousands of dislikes at first, thousands of insults. All people who, by the way, thought they were being commissioned by you. They thought they were on a crusade. And it's not just an idea that got in their head randomly. It's something that you project. Even if you don't say, oh, go raid our channel. No, you still do it. And on the other hand, you sometimes do it positively. Sometimes you actually do send subscribers to a channel to say positive things and subscribe. But that doesn't make up for it. It doesn't make up for the, the few moments where you actually use your powers for evil. And this links directly to also the idea that I think you do it because you think you can get away with it. And in a sense, you can. Because... I don't think that you've ever faced repercussions for what you've done. The Team 3D Alpha thing was just pushed under the rug. I could also mention the Alpha Destiny discussion, where he actually made two long videos addressing your points, which you failed to address every single time. I mean, Alex has a lot of patience because it's like arguing against a wall. Intellectual, intellectual dishonesty is one of the most lazy thing you can do, but also one of the most infuriating because it's a waste of time. Talking, about, talk, talking to someone who is like this is a waste of time, but people still try to engage with you because you have a big name. And I think that the community is starting to wake up. People are starting to see through all of that. And it's something that happened in the past. It's the reason why I say there's no repercussions now. Maybe they won't be in the future because you are pulling an Affinex. You're putting an Affinex. There's no other way to say that. For the people who don't know, Affinex, the biggest channel on YouTube Fitness, used fake weights. And he got away with it by censoring massively on his page and ignoring. And you know what? It's working because it's too big to fail. But my question is, do you want to be like Affinex? I mean, people call you G Shred. Do you want to be GX? Is that the new name you want to be given? Also, let me say one thing. We've gotten to a point where people can't even refer to you by name and we have to make up silly nicknames. I know that part of it is a meme, but at this point, it also feels paralegal, meaning that people think it protects them from, from lawsuits coming from you. Is that what you want? Do you want half of the community to be in love with you and just worshipping you at your feet and the other one to be afraid? Do you want to be Voldemort? Because that's what it sounds like. I mean, at this point... We are dealing with something very serious and a lot of people don't take that into account and this is why this video again needed to be made. But the worst part about all of this, in reality the worst part about all of this is that just like Jeff said, you were the chosen one. It breaks my heart in a sense, not necessarily because I was attached to you but because I'm attached to the community and I've been there for 10 years. I've seen what this community has had to deal with again and again. I've seen what the big names did to, the, to their subscribers. I was hoping that for once, we would have someone with integrity and values. Someone we could look up to. Someone who wouldn't just abuse their power the second they got it. But it seems like that's what happened with you. 
where you seem to be again only respecting big names, big channels, and maybe it's because it took you so long to get there. Maybe it's because for you to blow up, it took a lot of years, a lot of work, and it made you resentful. It's a possibility. The man who takes seven years to climb a mountain, once at the top, will not be sending down ropes. He'll be sending down rocks so that no one can come after him. But you see that this is a problem, right? Because you're becoming like the rest. Man, YouTube fitness at the start, especially the aesthetic part, was just a collection of baboons. Idiots, people who knew nothing about lifting or diet, roid heads who gave terrible information, and who hurt people again and again. And then you came in. You, who has decent information. I have said it in the past in my previous video about you. You are the gatekeeper of YouTube fitness. Novices, people instead of interested in aesthetics, losing weight, having a better looking physique, they'll come through you. Okay, you'll be the gate that pushes them forward towards the rest of fitness. And you did that well. I was seeing an improvement up until like six, seven months ago. I was seeing an improvement in the community. But that changed because your attitude made it so that the people who now join your page become corrupted by your very attitude. And that attitude comes from the way you interact with others, as I said. That way is very simple. And I'm going to deal with it right now. It comes from the condescendence that you show to others and the fact that, as I said, you have no problem crushing people who are weaker than you. But on top of that, you engage in some behaviors, some of them that are purely linguistic, that are extremely questionable. And one of them that a lot of people might think, oh, it's not that bad, is the mosquito thing. I want to stop and really make a point out of this one because you might think it's funny and I've seen you use it on other people's channel where you comment and you've used that on my channel, calling the people who critic you mosquitoes. The problem is that you realize that by doing that, you're dehumanizing people, right? You're making it appear in the eyes of your audience as if these people are not human, are not worthy of respect or kindness. And that shows. It shows in the way your fanboys interact with others. They are treating us, the rest of us people, think freely like animals. And it is especially hypocritical on your part, because in your video when you quote-unquote addressed Job's video, you were shocked, apparently, that he referred to your trainers as shaved chimps. But, Greg, you do that all the time. And I want people to keep in mind that this is a political tool, okay? It's not random. If you look across the board, and I know that it might be a little bit severe to compare that to it, but, for example, for the people who know their history, the genocide in Rwanda, between the Hutu and the Tutsis, it started... Because one of the two tribes, in this case, if I remember correctly, it was uh, the Hutus, started referring to the other tribe as cockroaches. And slowly but surely, it developed into a mindset of people thinking, oh, what do we do with cockroaches? We step on them. So what happened next? Massive waves of violence. And I'm not saying that on YouTube Fitness it's going to happen. Of course not. What I'm saying, however, is that you are building a community that refuses to interact intelligently and is constantly confrontational. And that is getting to your head because you are dealing with a cult. You are now their god. They obey your every word. They are matching their image to yours. And therefore, look at what they look like. It's a reflection of you. These are a direct mirror of how you behave. And that, across the board, cannot be. And you know, I'm not the type of person that is going to try and, and lecture you on morals. Anyone who's watched my character studies, I can get cruel at, at times. But, I mean, it's who I am. And it's not something that I try to hide in my image. But on the other hand, you constantly try to present yourself as someone who does that for others, who's overtly positive. But that's not what we see. That's not what YouTube is seeing. And it's the reason why this weird dichotomy is making it so that people are waking up to you, to who you truly seem to be, which is someone who is not worthy of respect at all. And all of that, it, I mean, again, you started just gimmicky at first. It started just being a tiny bit annoying. And I know that a lot of that also participated in the way you behave. And the reason why you have a court-like following is because when you grew big, you also drew a lot of criticism, some of which was completely unheard of. For example, people critiquing your voice for being too high, people saying you're a manlet because you're small. You can't control that. I understand that it must have hurt and it must have pricked your ego because it's not something that you could actually deal with. But all of the rest, the copyright strikes, the way you behave, all of that you can control, you can keep in control. But you have refused. 
And that leads us directly to something that you repeat to your audience enough that I still wonder why you thought that you were equipped to call out Jeff on being mean, apparently, considering that you call your audience idiots all the time, you call out others for cloud chasing all the time, and there are big names in the industry that I'm not going to cite that have reported that the way you made videos about them made them uncomfortable, were uncalled for. And yet, you still did it. You didn't care, because it was for clout. And the problem is that when people throw that same energy back at you, you cower. And you start pretending like, oh, I'm such, I'm such a, a saint and people behave like this. How could they? How could they? They just are using your methods. That's what you get for acting like this on YouTube Fitness. You thought that you just, you just continue to ride that wave and get no repercussions. No, they're coming. And I think that they're coming in waves and the waves are pretty big. So I also want to talk about uh, a big problem with this entire thing that is again, being just glossed over by Greg. And that's the price. Because as I said, Geoff made a video about a training program that is way overpriced and uh, it got struck down. And the argument by Greg was, oh, the price is nothing. Uh, the price is perfectly fine for the product, etc., etc." First off, coming from someone who is money hungry, that doesn't really make me confident in the product you're going to sell. And the worst part is that you have, and I, I salute you for that, it's insane. You have managed to turn the money hungry thing into a joke, meaning that you actively tell your audience, oh yeah, I'm only doing that for money, and they clap, like they're happy. Oh yeah, empty my wallet, Daddy Greg. This is parasocial to the optimth. It's insane. It's, it's a tour de force that you've managed to accomplish. But at the end of the day, I found that people who keep repeating who they are as a joke, as sarcasm, are really just explaining who they are inside. When, I think it was Maya Angelou that used to say, if someone shows you who they are, trust them. And I'm going to trust you on that. I do believe that you are insanely money hungry. And all of that is proved by the cookbook. Cookbook that you keep repeating is worth the price. There ain't no cookbook on earth that is worth the price you sell yours for. None. And I've also heard testimony because I don't own the book of people who tell me that the recipes aren't that good in this. So why do you sell them for that much? Well, I'll get to that. But it's the same for your training ebooks. A hundred dollars for a training ebook, that's way overpriced. It makes no, no sense at all. And on top of that, you seem to be extremely pissed and peeved at Jeff saying that his ebook is better for a lower price. But I think that the reason why you're so upset is because it's true. You know that it's true, most likely. Your writing skills aren't super top-notch. Your knowledge is good, as I said, for novices, but you have, you have uh, des lacunes. You have flaws in your knowledge. And these were exposed by Geoff. It's also the reason why you're so mad at the guy. And also the reason why you said that you cannot call him a human being. Really? So we went from mosquitoes, so insects that you want to squash, to now refusing to use the name and refer to the person as a human. Even I, with Cove Bloho, who I also don't consider to be someone worthy of me using his real name, I still think the guy is human. You went like a step beyond that. This is hatred. I don't use that word lightly, but this is hatred directed at someone, and you know full well that there is a chance that a lot of your subscribers are also going to start hating the guy. So in reality, it is a sort of diatribe of sorts. It is dangerous. It is a call for action, whether you like it or not. And as far as the reason why you're able to sell all of that nonsense for such a high price is because you market it up because of a big audience. And that is the crux of the argument in reality, something that I'm not going to spend too much time on because I've already made a video about the parasocial. But this link you've built with your audience, the fact that some of them are so invested in you, allows you to market at that price. Because if they didn't know who you are, if they didn't like you at all, and they just based their uh, assessment of the product and the, the price off of the quality of your information, they would never pay that much. Because they understand that nothing is worth that much, at least on the realm of YouTube fitness. And yet, you still push it. And you keep pushing it because you know it sells. And it's the reason why also I think you were so actively censoring shiply, I don't know if that's a word, with Geoff is because you understood that he was trying to break that down. He was trying to bring people back to reality and saying, hey, look at it objectively. Do you truly think that that much money is worth the product that you're going to buy? 
And the answer is across the board, no. But he was doing something. He was waking people up from the dream. You are the dream seller. You are the guy who's selling sand in the eyes of everyone saying, oh, I'm Coach Greg and buy my product and buy my cookbook so that they fall asleep and you can actually incept ideas of product purchase in their heads. But Geoff was trying to shake these people awake and he managed. Some people woke up and you don't like that, don't you? And that's the problem. You don't get a say in this. Okay, this is YouTube fitness. It's a realm free. For now, it's free to an extent. And you're trying to take that away. That's unacceptable. And the problem I have with your products too, and I must say it, and I'm going to correct, correlate it directly to the video you made explaining your choices of censoring someone else's video, is all of your stuff is targeted towards noobs. And that is dangerous. Athlinix does the same thing as the reason why the fake weight was so bad is because he used it to market strength programs to noobs and novices. And the issue is that these people know nothing. I've spoken, I've spoken about that in the previous video. They know nothing. So all of their knowledge base is going to be yours in reality. They're just copy pasting everything you know, everything you say, and they're implanting that in their own brain matrix. But the problem is that if you put some marketing schemes in there, they download it with the rest. And therefore, you are manipulating your audience into buying your products. There's no other way to say it. And that's the free market. You know, it's not like you're the only one who does it. Every big company does it. There are literal propaganda campaigns that run on TV, on Twitter, whatever. I understand that. I'm not going to come out. I mean, you look, look at the thumbnail. Clearly, I mean, I'm not going to be the guy who is going to tell you, oh, free market bad. We need to just naturalize everything. No, not at all. I understand that these are the laws of the jungle. It's how it works. My problem is, if you're going to be a shark, be a shark all the way. Behave like a shark. You can't just behave positively. You can't eat the fish and then tell the fish that you're his best friend. This is not the word of Nemo. You truly need to be upfront and honest about your intentions. And I think that you failed to do that again and again. I, I want to say also one thing, and I know that uh, it's something that Greg Fineboys don't like to hear. Yes, you are allowed to purchase this cookbook. Yes, you're allowed to spend however thousand dollars you want to spend on coaching. That's your right. It's your human right as a consumer. But you don't have the right to be free of criticism from it. That's free speech. If I see a guy buying a glass of water for 200 bucks, yeah, I, can have, I don't have the power to stop him, but I have the power to call him an idiot. And it's something across the board, if you look at my community page and the meme I post on it, that I do all the time. And I do it for a purpose, right? It's not just me thinking, oh, I'm so high and mighty and better than you. No, I do that so that you wake up. You see the meme where I call you an idiot and you think, huh, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I am wasting my money on things that really don't matter. And that's across the board something that I've always tried to do. And Greg goes beyond just that in reality because he would counter what I said by saying, well, it's for your health. Aren't you willing to invest a lot of money for your health? I mean, yeah, I am, but not that much. And on top of that, I could do it myself. I don't need to pay you for it. If I were to use another metaphor related to liquids, it's like if you went to a festival and people were parched and all of the, the, the pipelines, all of the, the faucets were dry. People have no water. Okay. You show up and you start selling bottled waters for $25 a pop. Is that right? According to the laws of the free market and capitalism, it is perfectly right. It's supply and demand. But morally speaking, is that right? I say no. And on top of that, it's not even a good metaphor, because if I were to apply it to your client base, I would say if it's, it would be as if, you, if you're in a festival, you start selling the bottled water, but all of those people who buy the bottled water don't know that there is a secret bathroom somewhere in the festival where they could get water for free. That's a true metaphor for your system and your schemes, because in reality, fitness and knowledge is free. You can learn it all by yourself. You don't need to invest in anyone's products to be able to learn it. That's nonsense. I understand the industry is based on that. I'm against that 100%. It is always a scam by default because the price is way up there. And if we go back to supply and demand, again, it correlates with your your logos and the argumentation you give for the price of the products. You say, look, I can only supply so, supply so many training plans and there are only so few people that want to buy it. But if the, in your case, since the demand seems to really just outsize the supply, 
you can market the price up because it means that it reduces the pool of individuals who can purchase, reducing the clients and making it so that you can actually help everyone. Okay, technically that's sound. It is really sound, right? Like if we're talking about marketing, but the issue here is that you fail to take into account the parasocial. And the parasocial makes it so that this is not a pure relationship as you present it to be. It's not just people who see a great product, who bid on it because there's only so few of them and the highest bidder gets it. It's not that. They are invested in you. They don't trust the product, they trust you. So what happens in this case is that they are going to spend inordinate amounts of money for something that they don't really know much about because they're noobs because it's sold by Coach Greg. And I know that all of that is me just deconstructing the way you do business. And maybe you're going to even try to strike this video or threaten a lawsuit or something. I don't know if it's possible. All I know is this. I will gladly take a strike on my channel if it means standing up for what I believe. And in this case, I'm standing with Jeff because he said the same thing. He explained what I said perfectly. And it's the reason why you strike him, which also shows that you know it's wrong. You know that your entire thing is wrong, that the charlatan business you have running is actively taking advantage of people. But by actively censoring in return, you have shown also that there is a level of guilt and shame here. You're trying to hide the truth. You're trying to push it down. And if people still watch you at this point and think you have integrity, they have their answer. There ain't no integrity left in Coach Greg, apparently. It's over. And it's sad. It is sad again, I truly, I mean, I think Jeff saying that you are the chosen one with like the Star Wars meme was, was so real. You took down all of these idiots, you came up, were like, man, finally someone in bodybuilding who apparently has two brain cells to run together, who is going to help and make community better, and nope, again, another, another someone who grows too big, becomes a scam artist, becomes a fraud. Can we stop? At this point, we have the two biggest names of this entire thing bearing Jeff Nippard, who are sellouts. And you make it sound like, oh, it's a big joke, I'm a sellout. Ho, ho, ho. You are a sellout. Like, I've just proven to you that step by step that you are a sellout. But I'm not done yet. I'm just going to check the time. All right. Let's keep going. So, as I said, all of this, the free market, the stupidity of people who invest, also correlates to the client. And I want to say, and I want to make it clear right now, I am not encouraging people to dox that individual. I am not encouraging people to personify him as the representation of the Greg fanboy. If you look at my memes, I never use real people. I use drawings because that way it can conceptualize the idea of the fanboy who just empties his wallet. The guy who testified looks like a great guy, but I have a lot of things to say about his, tes uh, his testimony because one, he clearly was a noob. He was someone who was uh, gravely overweight, all of which made it so that no matter what he did, he would have gotten results. If he went on a stupid, I don't know, a random keto diet and some push-ups and squats in a day, he would have lost the weight. So don't present your services as the reason why he got to that level. He got to that level because his lifestyle in the past was so abjectly horrifying that any deviation from the norm made it so that he now looks tremendously better and feels better. Has nothing to do with your training programs and you know it. And every single grifter on this platform knows it. All of those people who market to novices and who say, oh, he made, he changed his life. No, yes, he did change his life, but he didn't need you. He could have done that without paying you if he just did his research because everything is available out there. And he also said, if I remember correctly, that he would recommend your product. And that's good. Oh, you have a happy client and he's smiling and he's saying, buy the product. That is positive criticism. Okay. That is great. You are allowed to have reviews, but what you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to censor negative reviews. And that's what you've done. Every single website on the internet is regulated by laws. You are not allowed if you sell a product on some uh, website out there to just delete negative reviews. It's forbidden for a reason. We need the balance. And what Geoff was trying to do is he was trying to build balance to the force and you refused that offer. You crushed him with the power of the dark side if you really want to push the metaphor that far. That's not okay. You know it's not okay, right? Tell me that you know it. Because at this point, it feels like you think it's justified. But I truly don't think it is. And no one does. No one does. It's the reason why your last video got backlash is because 
you are wrong. You're in the wrong. Just wake up. And to get into just the nitty gritty details of that, yes, a, a thousand bucks for plants is overpriced, but you can sell that, as I said, through the parasocial and through marketing schemes. You can fool your teenager audience. You can't fool me. For example, saying that no price is too high for health is a form of fear mongering. When you tell people, oh, would you rather just end up in a hospital bed and die? That doesn't scare people at all into buying your products, does it? And the problem is that it's nonsense because you are not the commissaire of health. You're just not. You're not the only person who can give them that. They can give that to themselves if they just open their eyes. And it blew my mind with the client too, because the client said something very similar. He said, oh, I, I sent an email and it made me reflect on me. You needed to write an email to reflect on the way you eat, the way you train, the way you sleep, really? Is that the lack of individuality that we're dealing with here? Because in reality, what it means is that he needed a connection with Cove Greg and his team to be able to understand who he is as a person. That, if you had awareness, would terrify you. It would make you realize, hey, there's a problem with my audience. Something happened with my audience. But apparently it doesn't really matter to you because <clears throat> you don't seem to care as long as you make money. So even if you sell products to a bunch of lemmings, you're fine with that. And I thought you were better than this. I truly did thought you were better than this. And you still present yourself as being better than that. The client testimonies is also, as I said, a thing that is extremely powerful because they're always happy clients. And you made sure to insist on how much he smiled. Look at how much he smiles. He's so happy. Yeah, but now what you're doing is you're correlating that with you. You're linking the dopamine receptors of your subscribers to you, to your name, to your face, to your voice, to your products. That is marketing. And you know it because you're a good marketer. You're a good salesman. But are you a good person? It's the question asked here. Are you a good person? Do you want to still be a positive force? Or do you just want to become, like they say, G-Shred? Because you made a joke about it, but I think that that nickname really pisses you off. And I have a personally, uh, I have a policy of always using nicknames that people don't like if I don't like them. It's the reason why I call Bloho, Bloho is because he hates it. So it's the reason why also I think the industry is just going to keep calling you G-Shred. Because that's what you are. <sighs> There's also like the, the insane infomercial talk. Oh, you can do it too. It's half price. Half price for a limited time. I mean, at this point, just throw the entire book of Marketing 101 into my face. I, it's, it's redundant. And people who can't see through that really need to reflect on themselves because it's like, it's basic. It's basic. I know people in cities who try to sell you I don't, like random rings or things with magical power, jujus, that are more, uh, more covert about their way. You are so overtly aggressive with your marketing with the buy the cookbook and do this and do that, that it is a miracle to me that people still buy. But they buy because, as I said, the parasocial is extremely strong with your channel, incredibly strong. And that is through co the Coach Greg persona that you have developed the last few years, the high voice, the screaming, blah, blah, blah. The fact that you show your pets, you show your girlfriend. I'm not going to act like some of those classless uh, Neanderthals that spoke poorly about your girlfriend. She's not in the game, okay? We're talking about you here. But what I'm saying is that all of your, sp your spiel about I'm your doctor, I'm not your doctor, blah, blah, blah. All of that has created a very strong link of trust between you and your audience. And you need to respect that. You need to respect the power you have. But you don't. You clearly don't. And to finish with the marketing thing, I want to say that and it's something that, again, you try to misdirect your audience in your video. It's Your plan is not a scam because it's expensive. No one said that. The plan is a scam because it is bad. The plan is a scam because in comparison to the price, you cannot expect the product to be that good. I say it's bad. Could be mediocre, could be okay. In my opinion, a program should be made by you. So that's my own bias. What I say here is that englobing all of that, the reason why there's so much backlash now is that the plan lacks transparency, meaning that if, if, let's say we go back in the past, if you had actually went and not struck Jeff's channel, just made an, a response video and not ignore him and actually answer his points point by point and just say, you could have just said the same thing, you could have said, hey, it's the law of the market, there's a, there's a very low supply, I don't have the structure for that, so that's why the price is so high. You could have gotten away with it like this, 
because it would have been transparent but you lack transparency completely and that last video showed it and people are calling you out for it because you never mentioned the crux of the issue crux of the issue being you censored someone you used your power to shut someone up and that lack of transparency is also caused by as i said the parasocial because you get away with it a lot of your fanboys will still defend you after that and i know also that uh, i need to say it now I know that I'm going to have to deal with a raid, most likely, if this video gets popular. People are going to don't vote, they're going to say mean things. It don't touch me. And I want to say to the people on this channel, don't defend me. It's a waste of time. You're talking to sheep. There's no point. Their brain has left a long time ago. But I'm willing to take the risk because you know what? Again, I'm not someone who's trying to defend his image. I have in the past been cruel. I will be cruel again if needed. And if I have to do it, I'll do it. So... I also want to say that that behavior doesn't just impact you, it impacts YouTube fitness because you dictate the way the algorithm works and by constantly making drama videos that are intellectually dishonest, you promote that type of content again and again. And you're creating pockets of nut huggers everywhere and the reason why it's, it needs to stop. You, you can't just shit all around YouTube fitness and on top of that shut people up who tell you that what, that's what you're doing, right? If we gave pigeons the right to just shit everywhere and on top of that make humans disappear, the entire city would soon resemble some sort of weird looking cake and not the type that you want to eat. This is the weirdest metaphor I've ever produced, but it's why we're trying to keep you in check, we're trying to keep you in balance. But if you don't let us, then understand that you are creating a dictatorship of sorts and I just don't want to live in that type of state. So again, I'm going to continue fighting against that. Because you crush three things again and again, just like the thumbnail shows, you took someone who deviated from the norm of people who praise your products and you crushed him. And you used terrible reasons for that. And the ecosystem that you created around your channel is also toxic. Look at Afinex. Look at his lap dogs, the people who are waiting to just stand at ovation and just protect him for everything he does. Do you want that? Is it who you want to become? Because he's making money, huh? he's making bank. No problem with that. He's selling stuff to novices. He has people praising him all the time. He's living the life. But is it who you want to become? I thought you called him out in the past for a reason. It's because you saw what he was becoming. You saw the corruption and you didn't like it. And I was like, man, kind of like that. He's keeping himself in check, but apparently you don't. So is it, is it what you want? Again, because it's what you're going to become or what you've already become. There's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of other problems with your channel. As I said, you kill dissenting opinions. You demotivate natural lifters, which should be another video altogether. Your ideas of natural standards is incredibly low. What you push to novices is incredibly low. I understand why you do it. They're just getting started. But you, again, are a gatekeeper. You shouldn't just tell people, oh, stay at the gate with me forever. No, you should be pushing them forward and say, hey, research more. But I don't know if you have that ability because you lack knowledge on a lot of things in fitness. You don't really understand RPEs from what I understand. You don't really understand training to failure. Programming as a whole is not your forte. Okay, let's not, let's not beat around the bushes here. But the problem is that you sell programs. And the way that you are able to get away with selling programs is that you sell them to novices. Because if someone advanced bought one of your programs, they would immediately be able to tell that there are flaws. And the problem is not worth the money. You have become a mega structure and you are selling what apparently are copy plans. I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying it is. I am saying, however, that it is a staple of YouTube fitness. A lot of big pages do that, meaning that they sell regurgitated plans to clients again and again. But we're going to be able to find out very soon because there are a lot of people coming out with the custom plans you sent. So if we find out that in this case, you have actually just used the skeleton of a program, modified and removed a few things and just posted it as something brand new, we will know. We'll be able to tell if that's correct or not. You also, and that's just me guessing, started selling shoutouts. Am I right, Greg? Is it what I've seen? Do my eyes betray me? Because I've seen you make videos on completely random channels, small YouTube channels that you shouldn't even know exist, overtly positive in a weird switch of styles because that's not really what you do. And the justification for it that you gave in your video, which it quite sounds like a preemptive justification for an accusation, doesn't it? You say that it's because, oh, if someone makes a good review of the product, 
then I'll just make a video, a nice video about it. But I know you, you're money hungry, you would never do that for free. How many people did you shout out, sent you money for it? Be honest about it at this point. I don't know if it goes against YouTube's guidelines, I'm not saying you did that, but it looks like it. And, and that's the last thing that I've never heard anyone say, uh, even Geoff didn't say it, I, know, I think he knows it, he just didn't have time to actually verbalize it, but what you did to his video was a planned and prepared way to propel your marketing tactics and save your ass and be able to sell more plans, which you can present as you just protecting your brand, but it's not because it's protected by free speech. It's protected by, in this case, the First Amendment of the USA, which might not apply, I don't know, and also simply by the law of fair use. It was transformative content. You had no right to do that, none. But you and your team, I don't, I don't care who did it. If you come out and you misdirect and say, oh, my team did it, I didn't know, and we'll just restore the video. Too late. You did it. It's too late. It's in your name now. And the thing too is that you've accomplished what you wanted. Because last I checked his video, it was on, uh, on course to reach the algorithm, meaning that I saw it at 20k views within 24 hours, which means that it was already at the point where it was going to reach the mainstream and blow up. And you know that because no one plays the algorithm better than you on YouTube Fitness. So preemptively, you struck it down knowing full well that even if you have to restore it in the future, it's too late. The momentum of the video is lost. And in that case, it means no visibility. And you know better than anyone the power of visibility because you ignore and you bully people who have none. Too big to fail. You might have become that, Greg. You might be too big to fail. All of these attacks might do nothing because I explained that in the past. Your group of nut huggers is so strong that is it's not going to be self-fulfilling. You have an endless base of clients that will buy your shit. But is it true? Is it true? There's a possibility that it's not. I've been on YouTube Fitness for a while. I've seen the choruses of this industry come and go. At some point you fail. The momentum is going to die. And when that happens, you're going to be left with nothing. Because your loyal subscribers, people like me, who've been following you for seven years, who have sort of left your channel because of the insane amount of aggressivity on it, are also going to be gone. And then what? What was the purpose of all of it? Now you're left with no people to sell shit to, and you don't even have a community. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying, however, it's a possibility. Because your ego, the rambling comments, which... I thought for a while that maybe you weren't the one writing these, but now I'm fully certain that you are. Why do you go on every video that critics you and just have a PMS attack in their comment? You are teaching your subscribers that that's okay to do. And again, we're not victims, but when I receive death threats because I critique Coach Greg, I really scratch my head and I'm thinking, man, first off, is a 12-year-old going to show up to my door with a Pikachu backpack to stab me in the artery? And secondly, also, what world do I live in? that I'm receiving that type of messages because I just expressed my opinion. They do that because of you. They do that because of how you behave. And now you censor, so they're going to think it's fine to mass flag videos using your methods. And I'm already, I think, preemptively seeing something like this. It's like prophetic in a sense. Because you are a supernova, you truly are. You are incredibly powerful. You have an ins insane amount of momentum. But keep in mind that supernovas eventually die. And the worst thing with all of this is that you painted Geoff as a weenie. You painted as like some guy who's just jealous of you and who wants to sell his ebooks over you and who's just like deeply resentful. Is, is it how you perceive him to be? Because you're seeing him through hatred tinted glasses. Again, as I said, I'm not friends with the guy. I've never even sent him a private message or anything. But I'm a fairly decent judge of character. The guy looks decent. He looks like a good person. And I also respect... The fact that he said he wasn't going to go too hard on you, which you don't deserve, is the reason why I'm a little bit aggressive, more aggressive than he was, even though I'm not the one who's concerned. It's because the concepts at play matter a lot. He was nice, I'm not. If you want to help people, <coughs> continue helping people because I'm that's what you want to do, there needs to be a change. I'm not saying you need to change who you are as a person. Your gimmick is fine. I mean, if you can call your subs moron and sell them overpriced products and they keep going, then by all means, keep doing it. It's, it's none of my business. But you can't act like this. 
you can't attack others perfectly and then when someone attacks you, you just back off and you act like you've been bullied. You're the biggest, one of the biggest bully on YouTube Fitness. And some people, a part of me, likes you because of that. But now, again, you're using your powers for evil. You're not striking where you should strike. Because in reality, if you, if you, if you wanted to know who right now is the biggest problem of the fitness industry, you would need to go in your bathroom and look into a mirror. Because Affinex at this point, I mean, uh, it's, it's, people tried, apparently he cannot be taken down, whatever. But for you, man, you're, you're the last hope. You're the last thing that we had. Please don't become this. Please. I know people detest you. I know some people on my channel wanted me to make a character study because they hate your guts. And you've seen that when you commented on my channel. You expected people to just flock to you and adore you like they usually do on other channels. And on mine, you got downvoted all the way down and insulted for 30 pages. I'm not proud of it. That being said, I'm proud of the free spirit of the subscribers of this channel who don't bow down to gods. We don't bow down to no one on this platform. And that's great, but you didn't like it at all. And the reason why you don't like it is because your ego is now fully inflated. <clears throat> and you didn't address any of Jeff's points, but I've already said that. You just misdirected. If you want to help millions, as we said, you need to change. People look up to you. They get their goals through you. A lot of them do. They get motivation through you and they're bound to you. You are essentially a father in spirit. Be kind to your children. And be kind to the people who sometimes tell your children when you're being a little bit abusive with them. Respect that, okay? It's the way the game is played and you know that better than anyone. And find boys might not see anything wrong with it, even though I just made an hour long video about all of it, explaining all of the details, but I do and all of the community does. If you want to end up like Athenex, who is only respected by not huggers and novices, by all means do it. You've already lost the respect of a lot of the serious lifters out there. And we are the backbone of this community. We are the people who make it work. So again, you want to end up with just a sea of sheep and zombies that you can just sell stuff to, by all means keep doing that. No one is there to prevent you from doing it. That being said, you can't silence people when they call you out on it. You can't. You want to spread positive fitness? Just stop lying and reflect on yourself. And I know the fanboys will come out and tell me, hey, who are you with 10,000 subscribers to be able to tell someone with a million subs, a hundred times more than you, that they need to reflect? Who Are you the Dalai Lama? Are you the Buddha? No, I'm just a guy. I'm a guy who followed Greg, who was disappointed, a guy that will unsubscribe, and I'm not telling you to unsubscribe, but I will. I'm not going to post comments under his videos again until he actually goes out, apologizes to Jeff, and sets things right. And as I said, even if he did, it's still leaving a permanent mark on his record. I'm going to leave you with that. That was it for the video. Greg, if you watched it, I, I hope that you hear what I say. I hope that you don't think I'm a mosquito. It came from the heart. It came from someone who is concerned. And I also want to say, and I should have said that at the start of the video, so if someone wants to make a comment, um, saying that and I will pin it or something. Don't subscribe from to my channel, please. This is not a video I make for spew for views or whatever. I don't care about that. My channel is not monetized. I make it because it needed to be said. This community is too important and I will fight for it. But I don't want you to think that I'm your savior because I actually am not. I'm just showing you what's going on. So please don't subscribe based on this video, please. This does not reflect my content. And something I also should have said, and I'm very sorry to my uh, actual subscribers for that. This is a one and done thing. Okay? I'm not going to enter the cycle of drama. I'm not going to make responses if responses happen. It's my piece. It's there to stay. It reflects this concept that are dear to my heart. We are back to the normal and regular schedule next week. This is not going to be the new direction of the channel. I promise. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.